That'll do, pig. That'll do. Ugh. Good lighting. Where's the light? There we mm, Let's use the tree. The tree shade. I was meant to do a bit more of a silent-y quiet intro, but I couldn't be bothered. You know when you... I cracked open a can of Guinness, by the way. You know when you're just meant to do a camp task and you're meant to do something, someone in your group or something is meant to get the fire going, and you just think, should I crack, o should I crack open a beer? Love me, my Guinness, especially in the winter times. It's like having a soup. Did what I could with the fire pit, which I'll show you in a minute. But to be honest, I just want to relax and, and enjoy the woodland. It's actually half past five at night, so I'm a little bit late coming to the woodland. Uh, I was going to do an overnighter, but I've actually got to do some bits at home now, look after the dog. So, overnighter's not on the cards anymore, which sucks. But I've still come out, uh, brought a day pack with me, going to cook up some food. I wanted to get this part of the uh, bushcraft camp done, this fire pit. Love the stuff. Mmm, that's so good. Definitely my favourite alcoholic beverage by far. Bit of bushcrafty fire lighting, the same old. Just a bit of silver birch, birch bark. This is the fire pit I've built. I say built, I just chucked some rocks down. It's, uh, it's some of those rocks that I had at the cabin, the pallet cabin. Some leftover ones. So this is like fire pit version 10,001 at the bushcraft camp, uh, and it's still not 100% how I want it, but it will do for now. So it's more to just have a bit of deflection. So I've got the. Can you see this? No. Let me zoom back a bit. I've got the the air pipe that we built in camp up there. I think it was 14, where we built the uh, pipe that goes from out the camp and actually draws air through here. So I face the fire this way. Yes, the secondary lean-to shelter over there doesn't get heat as much, but this one, the main one, will. Um, this is not going as well as I thought. There you go. So yeah, this is it. This is what I've got so far at the camp. There's still a lot more I'd like to do just bef before the winter properly sets in. Do you know I'm going to risk it and just go with that much? Ooh. Let's just go for that much. I've barely got any scrapings there. But we will see. If I guess we can get any success. There we go. No, don't go out. Don't you? No. <sighs> Should have got more. Should have got more, Mike. What's the moral of that story? Idiot. <laughs> it's been lazy. Right, go on. Oh. Take a bigger dust pile. Don't be lazy. Try again with a minimal amount of dust. Go on, son. You know what? I just need one of these to light. There we go. Down my hand. That was pretty lazy from my part. But we got there in the end. So, fire pit's still a bit small to be honest. Uh, and in the summer months, I wouldn't be too confident with this being very safe. But because we're coming into autumn now, I think we might be alright. <laughs> Let's just get some sticks on it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely too small. If I was doing overnighters, I'd want it to get it out a bit longer. But I've got some more granite rocks, so I'm going to use those. Everything's still so dry. It's so dry, it's awesome. Awesome for fire lighting, but yeah, I kind of am looking forward to some cooler weather. We are beginning of October right now. So we're getting getting into the fall. It's coming. 
I'm pretty pleased with that so far, that fire pit, for just a five minute jobby. It's not too bad. I need to get some more. I can use some logs now from the log store. It's another thing I want to do. This was just a short, short, I say short camp update. The video might be longer, but shorter camp update. Oh, where's me Guinness? Where's me Arthur? Arthur. Arthur. Ignoring the plane, check out this smoking stick. Yee you, that's on the vape. Oh, look, smoke rings. <laughs> Vaping stick. So I want it I want it to come out about here and a bit further that side so it's a nice long big one. So I will extend it. But you can see the back wall is there. Hopefully that should bounce some heat back into the main shelter. Who knows, we'll find out in winter. I haven't seen a woodpecker here in ages. Damn it, lost him. Found him again. See him? Going up that Scots pine tree. So what I've done is I've got the, the metal plate underneath still, underneath this large granite rock. I think they're granite. Put this flat slab of rock down. There's one, two, three rocks the other side. And then the old kind of masonry uh, blocks from the previous fire pit I just put here. So any sparks that fly out, hopefully hit them first and dissipate before they hit this really peaty soil, which is still so dry where we've had such a dry summer. This is what I'm really sceptical about at this camp. It's so, look, so peaty. In the summer when it's dry, this just catches light. You've got to be so careful. But I need to build this fire up because it's, that log's not doing too well. While the camp, uh, while the fire's going, sorry, I'm going to do a bit of... It smells funky out here. A bit of foraging. Because we're beginning of autumn now and it's perfect time for sweet chestnut. So Castanea sativa, which is the sweet chestnut tree. Really awesome tree and it oh, looks like the squirrels have already been. Let me show you. This is, do you mind? Thank you. So you can see the leaves are just turning, these leaves. They're not quite fully going yet. It's not full autumn. But this is uh, the shell of a sweet, sweet chestnut tree. And actually the squirrel's been kind enough to leave one of the nuts behind. This one hasn't fully developed yet, fully formed. But they come in this really spiky outer casing, um, which is actually really soft and, and furry on the inside. Those of you who know your sweet chestnuts will know what I'm talking about, but soft and furry inside. This is what the leaf looks like. It's quite a large leaf, um, and they're dotted around various different woodlands. This one, you know, if you look up here, it's all pine. All pine, all Scots pine, very dense, but actually over there, it's all broadleaf and beech and more ash and things like that. Cabin's just there, camp is over there, but um, yeah, these are these are last season's ones, probably much older. But that's what this that's what they do, they tend to open and then drop the seed, the nut, and the, the squirrels actually tend to get to them first. I'll try and find one that's not open yet. Oh, here we go, maybe over here. You generally need a glove to open them, but, oh this one, you can see it's starting to split there, so, so, yeah, it's obviously much easier with gloves, you can just uh, twist and, and pull it open, but without gloves it's, it's pretty spiky, so, you just need to prise it open, these, these probably won't be big enough because it's, it's quite early fall, and this is only a small, it's not a very mature tree, it's fairly small, so, but I think there's usually about four to six nuts in each 
of these. Go away, ant. There we go. So, can you see that? Hopefully you guys can see that. These are delicious when you roast them. Now, in our supermarkets over here uh, in the UK, most supermarkets will generally import the chestnuts. Some giant chestnuts like this, this big. The, the supermarkets import these giant I think they're from Italy. I think you can get them from Turkey. You guys in Turkey can get uh, big sweet chestnuts, but I think most of them are from Italy. They're lovely though. They're massive great things. And it's a real kind of tradition over here, the Christmas markets. Christmas markets in general in Europe are, are hugely popular and sweet roasted sweet chestnuts are, you know, tend to be one of the, the favored snacks around Christmas time and the festive period. But these, as you can see, if I can get this one open, or you can see on this one, See how it's not fully developed yet? It's gonna focus. Yeah, it's not fully developed yet. It's still white here, it's still turning colour, and they're very small. Our ones are small, and they're still edible. You still roast them. That one won't be very nice though. <clears throat> it's also very soft, and you need to wait until they're hard. <coughs> but you do really well to find some perfectly round big ones. They're just very, very hard to come by, and often the squirrels will beat you to it because they'll just get here early in the morning at first light and they'll just beat you to it. So you have to kind of move around a lot um, and you have to be alert. Can you see that? That's a, that's a small one. Too young, too young to grow any... Uh... Those hunters out there now is an ideal time for squirrel hunting, especially with your, if you've got an air rifle um, or a little, you know, like a 2-2. Uh, that's a re now's a really good time for um, for air rifle shooting and, and just general shooting squirrels. Just so you guys can get a rough idea, cabin there, new fire pit which I built. I'll put a vid link to the video up here somewhere, and camp over here. So, plenty dense woodland, all Scots pine here. All broadleaf there, lovely oak tree here, another oak tree there. Oak is always the last to go. Leaves, leaves are just going, look at that. Just about to go. But these will last ages. It'll be the last tree to turn the colour probably. All the acorns are pretty much stripped on this one. Squirrels! Cooking good now. Cooking good. Where's Arthur? Arthur? Where the hell did I put him? Aha! Uh -huh. Arthur! So I wanted to show you, a lot of you have asked how I sharpen my knife, kind of out in the field. Um, with my axe I've got that kind of sharpening puck, although I do use this as well. So this is my tool maintenance kit, and in it I do just have what's called a DC4, just a, with the name of it, sharpening stone. bought this years ago, and it's got a sort of diamond and ceramic side, rough and a coarse side to it. This is actually a newer one, my other one was knackered. How am I going to do this? Um, okay. So, my knife at the moment is fairly in need of a bit of TLC, not majorly. So, what I tend to do, if I was just, just kind of refining the edge a bit, just to get it back and it's only got small nicks, then I would just use this side. Oh, it's a bit of fluff there. And I just, I literally just keep my fingers out the way, get the bevel, find the bevel, and then just cut, just gently, obviously being aware of my fingers towards myself. There's loads of different ways to do this. Um, this is just my preference. I do it just a couple of runs, getting that bevel right. It takes a while to find the bevel. Obviously, if my fingers are completely out of the way, I know it's going to be safe, but you might want to do it a different way. You can just nail this to a tree stump if you wanted to. Secure it in place, maybe with some paracord, but I do it this way. And I just work my way along the bevel. 
You can use the stone if you want as well. Sometimes that's actually easier. So we're actually getting a bit darker now. Little tip, which I do with my head torch, I've shown this before in a video, but I always reverse the battery because I've had it so many times. There's the on button where this is pushed against my backpack, turned on, and then I've done an overnighter with a dead battery. Not very nice at all. So this is just a single AA battery head torch, but I always reverse the contacts. I know you're not supposed to, it's quite bad, but it just saves me running out of um, battery in case the worst happens. So then what I go to do my uh, when I need the head torch, which is soon, screw this down, and we're good to go. Winter is finally coming, using head torches more. Getting that time to first time this year, actually, with the few hands, storm lantern, or hurricane lantern. These are great, these. Um, I leave this one at camp now, just because it's, you know, I don't have to lug it back in then. Leave it with some fuel. You can use, you know, methylated spirits or paraffin. I think I use paraffin in this one. The wick's still there. This bit can be time consuming. And we should. Lower the glass, turn the wick down. Yeah. You can adjust the brightness of the flame if I bring this in. It's a really dim flame. And then you turn this little nozzle here and it lifts the wick up so that it burns brighter. Obviously less burn time and it smokes more like that. If you can see the smoke, it smokes a lot more if you have a high flame and it also gets soot all around the glass and blackens it up, which isn't good because obviously it doesn't let off as much light then. So. I usually go, I barely kind of turn it on sometimes, about there, hang her up. About there will do. I need some more hanging points, really. So just, just, just going to grill today, get the grill out, simple steak, keeping it simple. Uh, I haven't quite yet figured out how to put a folding grill on there yet, I, I guess I could put two logs either side and rest it like that, but as this has legs, might as well try and do something. Ooh. That might do it. So as well as I can of Arthur, just got us a 28 day matured steak. Rump, I think it is, a rump cut. Get some steak spice on there. Plenty of steak spice. I haven't cooked a steak on the, on the uh, fire for a while. Actually, tell a lie, did it with Dustin the other day. We cooked one, but that was that was fried. This is um, this is going to be grilled. So it has been a while, to be fair. Bit of steak spice. I think I've got some asparagus somewhere in my backpack. Put that in as well. Let's get this straight on the grill. Some asparagus on there as well, actually. It's almost. I know you can roast it, so I guess it's kind of like roasting it. She's almost ready to turn. In fact. Oh, yep, it's hot. Oh, look at that. Yes. Steak and Arthur. Can't go wrong. Yep. That looks good. I think that's done. Oh, I've been waiting a long time for you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is as simple as it gets. Man could not want much more in life than steak and Guinness.
bit of uh, roasted slash grilled asparagus. Slash raw. <laughs> no, I'm joking, that's really nice. That's good. On to the main event. It's fairly well done. Mmm. Oh, can't beat steak over the fire. Such a simple dish, but but effective. All oh, right, so good. Not much wildlife today compared to where I've been before. In the winter, it goes a bit devoid here, except about now you get the the deer coming through, going a bit cray, cray, cray. One last piece. I've missed steak. It's only been about a week. In the beard. One of you noticed I had a beard trim. When was it? Last video or something. And you're like, what? You were devastated where the beard went. I, I had a pretty big beard. It was about down here. It was just getting really itchy. Quite hard to just manage and just getting crumbs and crud in it. So I gave it a trim. It was a hard choice. I didn't really want to, but I sort of went for it. And then I immediately re regretted it afterwards. So then I grew it a bit more again and I'm just trimming it back now. I might just grow it out a bit for winter, who knows? I feel like this is the last of the the warm nights. It's gonna get colder now. I'm looking forward to it, I'm ready. Got the wool blankets, got the basic gear, like going back to basics. So I know that I've done a few videos at the cabin and here, the camp, lately. I've not done sort of many solo trips. In fact, I haven't done a solo trip for a while. So thanks for your patience for those guys who watch those videos. There will be a solo solo trip coming up. Before that, there's, I think, one more video here or at the cabin, I can't remember. Then I've got a multiple day overnighter coming. Four days, three days, four days, I can't remember. Uh, and then actually following that, I think I've, I'll be going on another multiple day overnighter. Uh, so basically the next month or so, two months, I've got a number of overnighters, solo, some with mates. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really good. I'm really looking forward to it. I appreciate the content at the moment. It's been a little bit repetitive maybe, but I needed to do the fire pit at the cabin. I wanted to do the fire pit here at the camp and make a start on it. So. We're getting there, we're slowly getting there. I love this little lantern. Maybe, should we go for a walk around the woods? Let's go for a walk around the woods with just this. Let's do it. Might have to whack it up, but let's go see what's out of the woods. So I barely got like 20 yards and I found this spider web just reflecting off the head torch. Look at this orb weaver. That is a beauty. Just sitting in its web there. And actually, it's a fairly big one. If you look at the perspective, if I put my finger near it, that's quite a decent sized orb weaver. It's a female, full of eggs. That is awesome. That is really cool. I nearly walked into it. Beast. Gotta be wary of these guys. I just saw the web reflecting up there. In the middle of your screen, just there, if you can see that reflection, that's a spider web. That's this one of these orb weavers. And you can see it's going vertical. It's going all the way up this tree. You can't really see it, but it's going all the way up this Scots pine. Miles up into the air. But what is awesome is that's how they that's how they do their webs. So they to get across each tree from tree to tree. So they they get on the floor and then they let, keep crawling across with the web, laying the web still, go to another tree, literally sometimes 14, 15 yards away, and then string up their web and it's incredible. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to find you guys this, this web, if you can see it on the camera, you probably can't see it, I can see it. It's coming down there, as the web comes down, 
to here, it, then it goes across, and that's when the spider's gone on the floor. And now it's probably somewhere over there. I'm trying to find the spider, but I sadly I can't. Ah, oh, that would have been awesome to see it going to the other tree to make its web. And again, I nearly walked into the bloody thing. Off we go. Into the woods, see what we can find again. Other than spiders. Just orb weavers today. I can't find those ruts that the... Whatever it was, hog was digging. And here's the camp. In all her glory. Wanna know, wanna know something stupid? I left my tripod out in the woods. And now I can't find it. I'm going on an adventure! Ah. Uh, thank God. Well that is just about it from me here at the bushcraft camp. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. It's been a good evening at the bushcraft camp. Sadly, I can't do an overnight, so I'm pretty gutted to be honest. I would have loved to have done one. I was in the mood to do one, but situations change and that's, you know, by the by. But I'm out next week, so yeah, stay tuned to the channel. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.